Hey. Yes, yes, yes. Tech Taste Daily. What's up? It's your man, Jay. It's your man, Antoine. You know who it is? You know, I hate when rappers say that on songs. And they're like, you know who it is? No, I don't. No, I don't. I've never heard of you. Stop saying that. Never you don't know who you are, are don't act like I do. So, I don't know I'm an ass. You know what I'm saying. However, in our case, we are everywhere like air. We're all over the place like space. And twan, I got a question for you. What's up? There was a minute ago in history where a good friend of ours was bugging on the whole Bitcoin phenomenon. And he was really trying to convince us to like go all in. He was like, yo, we can make all this money, and I'm about to make all this money. And then I never heard anything about it again <laughs> from him after that. So I know that you're educated on this, and I have no idea what the whole big deal is about Bitcoin. So I was hoping that you could illuminate us. Alrighty. Well, so um, first, let's let's just discuss what Bitcoin is. Okay. Um, Blockchain. Bitcoin is, is a um, digital currency based on blockchain, which basically ensures that each transaction has a history that cannot be spoofed or hacked or whatever, because the history of that coin, of that transaction, is shared on all of the peer servers that are part of the blockchain. Okay, that's really, really technical, even though that was very articulate. But can you um, elaborate on how, what the practical application of that is? Why is that so special? It's, it's like if you make a transaction at a bank, and instead of the transaction just being on that bank server, that transaction is on everybody's phone, in every bank, in every server. Basically, anybody that ever knew what money was has a record <laughs> of that transaction. So that's basically what the blockchain is. When you do a transaction, everybody knows. So it's more safe than it's, anything that we've ever had. Yeah, I should, I should clarify. Not everybody knows because nobody can read them because they're encrypted. Right. But there's a record of that transaction shared everywhere. So nobody can hack your account and steal your money because right. all the other servers would be like, that's not true. That's not what our records say. You know, so you would basically have to hack every computer on the planet to be able to spoof a Bitcoin transaction, which can't be done. So your shit is safe, basically. And a lot of people are saying this should be and will be the future of currency. Do you agree with that? Yeah, well, that's kind of what's happening now. And that's that's why the banks are all freaked out. So <laughs> they hate they, Bitcoin you know, or the, blockchain, anything, right? They don't, they, they want control of your money. Yep. They want to know where it is and where you spend it and Bitcoin kind of allows you to be somewhat anonymous and so what they're doing now is any place that you trade bitcoin any place that's reputable that you use as a bitcoin wallet they're trying to force them to track your shit and it's right? not working so they can tax you and whatnot so like here uh, we're looking at robin hood let me switch over the, the the screen cap view here please do um, we're looking at, at robin hood over here and robin hood has busted through the resistance and it's up at 38,650, 693, 92, 97, <laughs> uh, 81, uh, basically $38,680 and some change. Now $90 and some change. You can and see that's how your, fast it's changing. That's your people's, right? Uh, this, is, this is just the current price for one coin, mm. right? So if you were to try to buy one Bitcoin right now, it would cost you... Almost forty thousand dollars. Woo! Now here's what's interesting: is um, I bought uh, a Bitcoin ages ago. Okay. Uh, or a portion of a Bitcoin because you were when they smart. were about seven thousand five hundred and fifty-seven dollars. What? Now I started buying it when it was thirty-four hundred or so, but I didn't put a whole thirty-four hundred in it. Oh, okay. I should have. Okay, I should have put like five, ten grand in. And I would have had a couple of coins. It's a lot of money. Uh, so, but had I had I put five or ten grand in about a year ago, I would have almost eighty grand right now. Oh! So I only put in about twenty five hundred. Well, well, that still and, sounds and so good. I put in twenty five hundred when the coins were worth. You can see here about seventy five hundred. Mm -hmm. So that means that I own point two five 
one four zero four seven three of a coin. Well, that's a lot better than what I own, Twan. <laughs> yeah, zero. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, um, my what I, whatever my twenty five hundred that I put in mm-hmm. is worth nine thousand six hundred eighty eight dollars. So Ooh. I put in about twenty five hundred. And it's worth nine thousand. Now, if you actually want to do the math here, uh, I guess it says nineteen hundred. Mm-hmm. Is that what that means? Yeah. Paid, paid nineteen hundred and ten oh, oh, cents. I know. Yeah. And as a result of paying that nineteen hundred and ten cents, I have made seven thousand seven hundred and ninety-two. Well, it keeps changing as the seconds go by, but basically, <laughs> I made four hundred and nine percent my investment. So, what about these other Bitcoin competitors? Ethereum and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Uh, I don't really track those too much. I mean, I'm not really even a, a, a hardcore Bitcoin nor- nerd. Um, I just, I read an article about a year ago <laughs> about some dude that put like, what was it, $26 into Bitcoin mm-hmm. like five, eight years ago, uh-huh. maybe 10 years ago now right. at this point. And he forgot about it. Oh. And then he heard an article or heard a story about it on the news. So he went and checked his Bitcoin account. And his twenty six dollars that he put in was worth three hundred and eighty thousand dollars. Three hundred and eighty thousand. So he basically sold his Bitcoin and bought a house. I mean, not all of us were around when the Mayflower landed. That was forever ago. <laughs> Dude, it was like five years ago. <laughs> five, ten years ago, this guy spent twenty six dollars and his twenty six dollars turned into three hundred and something thousand dollars. That's it? Five years ago for real? Yeah. Dang, that that seems like Loosely about the time when our friend was talking about it. So he was just a little bit late then, huh? Uh, or maybe she. I'm not saying no little, names. Maybe a little bit late. Maybe uh, maybe early? sold when he should have held. Oh, dang. Right? Because what, whatever whatever he'd invested at that time, if he was still holding it, like Bitcoin is higher than it's ever been. So the fact that he sold it and because it was tanking, mm. like he probably sold it around in here somewhere. Like, in March of 2018, because back in, was it December? Uh, yeah, December of 2017, it hit its high point of $19,260. And that's when it was all over the news and everybody's wild about Bitcoin, trying to get some Bitcoin. Right. And then shortly after, it tanked. <laughs> and it, it, it went from like almost 20K, if people had bought it, when it was coming up, yeah, and they bought it like in here somewhere at fifteen thousand. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna get a hundred thousand dollars worth of Bitcoin at eleven thousand dollars, and then you know three months later it's at eight thousand. But and look at it now, though. Right. So that was it, not that long so ago. So this is this is a good point for investment strategy. Hmm. If you are trying to get rich quick, and you're trying to make your money fast, uh, you might think. When something jumps up and comes back down, ah, shit, I should sell it. Right. And if you sell it at a loss, then you're just giving money away. My philosophy is that the money that I'm investing, it's already gone. Poof. Right? I'm not, I'm not, it's not my life savings. It's not uh, my rent money, my my mortgage money, my right. car payment. It's play the money. It's gamble money. Boats. So I throw it out there. And if it makes money, cool. If it doesn't make money, then I fucked up. I made a mistake. I try to correct that mistake. But la vie. Uh, I try not to to sell at a loss because, in my opinion, unless the company's going bankrupt, eventually it's coming back. In this case, Bitcoin isn't a company, but it's volatile. It goes up. It goes down. Right. And because I believe that blockchain and Bitcoin are the way of the future, digital currency and whatnot. Yeah. It's it's got to go up because it has it has right. built in scarcity, right. which basically means that every um, I forget what the period is, but every year or so, the number of coins that are produced decreases by half. So that's good, right? For yeah, you, <laughs> eventually there will be no more coins. So it's not like the 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 it's a finite amount. It's not then. like the Federal Reserve that just prints money out of the blue right. and just makes money from nothing. Uh, there can only be so many Bitcoins. And as we get closer to the end, the Bitcoin value increases because of scarcity. You trying to tell me Bitcoin is like Highlander? There yeah, can only yeah. be one. Eventually, there can be only one. <laughs> <laughs> or 100,000 or 100 million or whatever the number is. But uh, we're getting to that point 
where the scarce the built-in scarcity is is starting to be a thing. So you can mm. see here when you look at the chart, yeah, like what since February or so, uh, March of 2018. When it got back down to kind of reasonable levels, yeah, we've kind of just been there, except for this dip, yeah. dip here. Uh, right. That's that's where I was talking about December of uh, 2018, and again over here in March of 2020, it was kind of reasonable prices. Wow! So, had you bought a coin then for five grand, your five grand will be worth forty grand right now. Well, thanks for telling me, Tuan. <laughs> Hey, well, you know, I didn't know, obviously, or I would have put more money in my damn self. No doubt. Like, no doubt. When, I, when I bought, I first started buying it, I don't know, around here somewhere when it was down in the 3000s, I bought a little bit. But I, I should have put a whole fucking three or four grand in and bought a whole coin. I feel you. If I bought a whole coin for four grand, yeah. that coin would be worth 10 times what I paid for it. Right now. But instead, like I said, I, I own uh, 0.25. I own basically a quarter coin. And I bought it because I didn't buy it all when it was thirty five hundred or whatever. Right. I bought maybe a hundred, five hundred bucks worth when it was that much. Yeah. And then when when it was up to six thousand, I bought like another five hundred. And then it went up to seven thousand. I bought another five hundred. When it went up to eight thousand or nine thousand, I bought another five hundred. So it smart. says, okay, it says my average price yeah. is seventy five hundred. But would have yeah. been smart is buying the whole thing at three grand. Well, you know, like it was it was at twenty. You know, it was at 19 something, yeah. then it dropped down here to three. Way I should have just bought a coin. I should, like, yeah. it's going to come back up. And now yeah. here we are. Look at this shit. This is unbelievable. <laughs> like, this is all in the last, look at that. That's October 2020. It was 11,000. So just two months ago, Woo. it was a third the price. So even two, two months ago, had you put $10,000 in, your $10,000 will be worth $38,000 today. So I know you already answered this. Uh, I just want to revisit this question because I, I, I'm just really curious. What about the Bitcoin competitors? Because a lot of people that I actually I trust their opinion have made it really clear that they think that Bitcoin is not going to be the one and only. Do you think that's true or do you think that Bitcoin is going to be the standard and that's going to be it? I don't think it's going to be the one and only. There's, there's not just Taco Bell. There's taco need, time. Yeah, you need some taco time. You need some <laughs> Jack in the Box. Del Taco. You need some Del Taco. Got Coke. You got Pepsi. You even need some Burger King every once in a while. Hey, not me, though. <laughs> <laughs> so um, what about the blockchain technology? Another, like, people that I really, the people that are much smarter than me, they're saying that the practical application of the blockchain technology is going to go way further than just currency. It okay. could be used for politics. It could be used for tracking the vote. Yeah, yeah. Get rid of that voter fraud. Get rid. Get completely. Get rid of voter fraud because everything. Yeah, man. I mean, and I'm not even scratching the surface. But um, how do you feel about that? And what do you know about it? Uh, voter fraud. No. <laughs> <laughs> the Funnel down, baby. Of blockchain technology and where it's going to go in the next decade or two. Yeah, any, anything that you need, you need you uniqueness or, or transparency of transactions. Blockchain is good for it. So it's it's good for record keeping, for log keeping, uh, for inventory, for order tracking. Basically, anything that you need to have a solid record of transaction history, blockchain is the move. Okay, okay, gotcha. That's, that actually clears it up. So that's why it's so, that's why people are so excited about it. Yeah, it has many more uses than, I mean, in currency, in fintech, it's just we can keep track of where your money went. I mean, that's that's the obvious place it would start, right? Yeah. Yeah. We can track everything. We know what you did last summer, and we know where your money is. <laughs> we know what you did uh, last summer. <laughs> but um, in reality, it's good for products, too, because we know where they were last summer. We know yeah. who bought them. We know who sold them. Yep. Uh, we know who tried to sneak out the store with it without paying. Hey, I know a guy that knows a guy that knows a guy. Frankie. It, it, it fell off the truck, but you got to be careful because it got blockchain on yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> We have terrible <laughs> mobster accents. Yeah, we, we won't quit our day jobs. We won't be mobsters. <laughs> no. But uh, anyway, that's that's a little bit on on uh, on blockchain, on Bitcoin, uh, on the fintech aspects of Bitcoin. 
Um, I wouldn't recommend going hard on Bitcoin right now because okay. it's the Bitcoin bubble I'm seeing. Mm. Um, the double B. I think it's going to keep kind of kind of going up, but this is like um, a hockey stick curve right here. It's going it's going way vertical. Right. So that that means like like we had back here mm. in 2017 that this there's where there's peaks there's going to be valleys. So there's going to be a downside to this to this uh, this hike here. So um, don't believe the hype. Don't jump on the bad wagon late. Don't worry about that FOMO shit. You already missed, <laughs> you already missed out. All so. the <laughs> IT people out there that's really down with this blockchain currency, not currency, this blockchain technology, let us know in the comments what you think, where you think it's going, and if Bitcoin is indeed where the future is. We have to get Charles on here talking about blockchain. Oh, gosh, Charles, man. Next time we got Charles, for sure. All right. Tech Taste Daily, yo. Peace. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Yeah. <laughs> Do it. <laughs> Do it now. All right, y'all. Peace out. Peace. Tech Taste Daily.